connected. Yes. So today I'm going to teach you uh, duodenum. Right now what you're seeing here, this is a specimen of duodenum. You can see that it's a nearly a C-shaped structure. That's duodenum. It is in continuation with the pyloric end of the stomach. Then it continues down as a jejunum, the nilium, and up to the ileocecal junction. That is the length of the small intestine. If you see from proximal to distal, the small intestine, the diameter keeps decreasing. So that means duodenum is the widest portion of the small intestine. Another thing is that duodenum is a fixed portion of the small intestine. It's retroperitoneum, and jejunum, ileum are carrying a mesentery, so they're mobile. I'll tell you duodenum although has a most proximal and the most distal portion of the duodenum that means the first part and the fourth part the terminal portion they are also peritoneal covered so they are also mobile now why is this duodenum fixed why is this duodenum first of all is an actually shaped thing and why is it fixed because the gastric contents which are being drained into the duodenum they have to be mixed with the biliary juices and the pancreatic juices for all the digestive uh, process to be carried out with the alkaline and acidic media there's a neutralization happening and the emulsification because of the bile so that's why the contents to be mixed up has to be sluggish and has to be slowed down so that's why this duodenum takes a c-shaped course especially what i'm talking is the third part of duodenum which is mainly an horizontal thing. so contents will stay there and you know uh, the more of digestion takes place in stomach and duodenum and gradually digestion also diminishes what increases distally is the absorption absorption keeps continuing even in the large intestine so that's why because narrowing of the lumen if you see the ileocecal junction ileum there that's very narrow the more the narrow the tube becomes the more of absorption can happen because the fluids will rub against the wall of the intestines, right? There are so many other factors which also increase the surface area for absorption. One thing, as you know, is the loops of the small intestine that if you see the length of the small intestine is around 6 meters. Then further, there are, you know, transverse mucosal fold. Actually, those transfers are actually, when you see in a circumferential manner, then it's a circular folds proud the length of the mucosa those are called plica cervicalis also called walls of curcling these walls of curcling are taller in height and more densely placed in the duodenum than in the jejunum and again from proximal to distal if you go the length of these walls will keep decreasing and the density also will keep decreasing these mucosal pores are fixed mucosal pores. If you stretch it, they will not disappear. And these mucosal pores you will not see in the terminal portion of the ileum. So one factor was this, walls of curcuring. Then over to these walls of curcuring and in the entire mucosa, you find a lot amount of finger-like projections. Those are called the intestinal villi. These are just visible to the naked eye, around in millimeters. These villi, increase the surface area of absorption by about 8 times and again the length and density of the villi also keeps decreasing from proximal to distal. Another thing is about uh, microvilli. Now on to the luminal surface of this mucosal epithelium, the cells, the lining, the cytoplasm, the cell membrane of this mucosal epithelium, they give out those finger-like projections. Those are cellular level microvilli like right? they also again increase the surface area for absorption because now we have to focus here on the jejunum about jejunum in ileum we have these roots of the small intestine placed here we will talk about jejunum and ileum next time right now we talk about the duodenum so this is a nearly a c-shaped organ post proximal portion of the small intestine and what fits here in this C-shaped thing? What is lying here? It's the head, head of the pancreas, head and neck of the pancreas, including the ancillary process. That occupies this position. And because of that, this has a C-shaped loop. Okay? Then why is it called duodenum? Duodecatechylos. That's a Greek term 
which has been corrupted actually. So duo, deca, dactylos means 12 digits, 12 fingers. So 12 fingers means like 4 and 4. And you again place a 4, either lag or 4. Ye ho gai char. Got it now? You 12 fingers. That much is the length of duo. Now measuring ke hisab se so, how length of the length of the length? 25 cm. 25 cm. If we say it in inches, then it will be 9 cm to 1 5 cm. So, 1 inch. So, 10 inches. What are the organs you know is of 25 cm? Esophagus. Stomach. Ureter. Then we will talk about its location. Now, on the surface, you see first of all, it is nearly a midline structure. Just because it has four parts and the descending loop, that the second part is more here. So somewhat on the right side, but it's nearly a midline structure. Duodenum. And the vertebral level now. So remember, the way to learn is like if you remember the transpyloric pain, everybody knows that passes through the lower end of the L1 vertebrae, transpyloric. That means pylorus waha pe hoga. But remember, pylorus ka jo continuation hai, that's the first part of the now. That is not like transversely or horizontally directed to the right, rather it is directed backwards and upwards. This is the first part of the duodenum. This is the second part of the duodenum. This is the horizontal or the third part of the duodenum. And the fourth part, right? So we're talking about this part. How does it continue with the pyloric and L1 lower border mein pylorus tha. Now it goes upwards and backwards. So what will be the vertebral level of first part? That will be just simply L1 vertebra. It lies opposite to L1 vertebra. It is about 5 cm which is 2 inches. Then it has a flesher and with that it descends down. That's the second part now. The second part will actually cross L1, L2 and will reach opposite L3 vertebra. Total duodenum actually jo hai wo L1, L2, L3 ke saamne. So this one, the second part which is on the right side of the spine of L1, L2, L3 it descends down here and then you have another flexure from there. This one, the second one, is having a length of about 7.5 centimeters, which is equal to 3 inches. Then a horizontal portion. This horizontal portion is the right side of the spine and left side of the spine. It will cross the spine. And the vertebra is 3. It crosses in front of L3 from the right side to the left side. It is horizontal, but slightly it is elevated on the left side. The reason you know there is a ligament of three. I'll tell you about that. And it's the longest portion of the duodenum. How much is it? 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters is 4 inches. Then the, you know, the fourth portion. This ascends upwards and forwards. Remember, important point. This ascends upwards and forwards. Because now the duodenal loops will be carried in front. Then it's the smallest portion. It is around how much? 1.5 cm is equal to 1. That will be opposite to the third vertebra, L3, and reaching to the lower portion of L2. Right? That is the fourth part of the So once again, the measurements also, because the MCQ is asked from this, 5 cm, 7.5 cm, 10 cm, and 2.5 cm. It's not easy to see. Horizontal test has been इधर इधर की दोनों लिंग्स मिला ली दस साढ़े सात और ढाई सिर जो बचता है वो पांच ऊपर का ठीक और इंचेस वाइज अगर बात करें दो तीन चार तो ये तो इसके पार्ट्स हो गए